Egyptology lovers, today we are doing the uh, false door of the royal sealer named Neferiu from about 2150 to 2010, 2010 BCE. Uh, this is uh, from the period for the first intermediary period monument example. So what we have here is basically a false door. The Egyptians believed that the soul of the deceased could freely enter and exit the tomb through a false door, which was characterized by recessed surface with a symbolic entrance in the center. So you can see over here the center entrance with the recessed surface. And by early Middle Kingdom, the false door design was combined with other elements and rectangular stelae. This first intermediary period monument exemplifies the beginning of that process. The text describes or inscribes on the jams flanking the door, the double door, proclaim the owner's good deeds and accomplishments on both sides over here. So what we're going to do is read the, the hieroglyphs there is a hieroglyphs on top here, and then there's a little hieroglyphs over here, which I'll read to you as well. And then the hieroglyphs over here, and hieroglyphs on each side of the door. And of course, what you have here is Neferiu and his wife on each side as well. So he is basically portrayed in the same way, but with his wife on either side. Now over here, you have a beautiful table offering of meat, fowl, birds, ointment, beer, uh, oils, cloth. Here's some uh, mora bread, some meat over here. So a lot of different offerings were made. So this, so the, the person who died can come back and then it's still enjoy the essence of the food, even though the families, let's say, died and nobody can leave offering at the door. He could still eat from the essence of the images. And here he is sitting down holding the lotus flower blossom or the oil symbol, which he puts towards his face. So the false door is very interesting here. What I wanted to show you is that here you have the eyes of um, Horus, which is the uh, the wedget, which is protection. And he has them on the door as protection, but also that he could see through into the world from the netherworld. So from the God's domain, you can see into our world. And over here, you have these little bold symbols, uh, the letter S. And on each side here, you can see them. Uh, they're basically meant to look like they're blocking the door. So they're locking the door and they can be opened. But also this is a symbol for the letter S, the consonant for the unilateral symbol. So very interesting little add-on, these little bolts to the door to keep it closed so it can be open again through a voice or a spiritual saying. So that's pretty interesting. So what we're going to do is going to go ahead and read the hieroglyphs starting from the very top over here and I'm going to work my way down for you guys. Welcome back Egyptology lovers. So today we're doing the translation. We're going to start from the very top over here. I'm going to turn off that magnifying glass so you can see. So looking at it over here you can see that there's some uh, offerings. So this is how it's read. It goes offering the king gives to Osiris, lord of Jadu or Besurus, voice offering of bread and beer, or bread and beer, provisions to the revered one, Neferiu, which is the owner. Now we have a little bit over here, some small little offerings. I'll read that to you. We'll put on a magnifying glass so you can see it. So there it is. And over here it says, the, the repeats always with the sa word, which is a thousand. So it says a thousand libation. So this means a water libation. And over here it says a thousand bread and beer. Here it says a thousand ox and fowl. Over here is a thousand gazelle with the antelope, of course, or antelope. Here it says a thousand alabaster or vessels, a thousand cloth, so clothing. And over here it says a thousand of everything good to the revered one, Neferiu again. Here's his name once more. All right, so that's pretty much the offering over here. And then we can go down over to the second offering. I'll turn off the, uh, the magnifying glass here and you'll get to see it. So now here is an offering to another god. It says an offering here, which a king gives to Anubis, who is upon his mountain, who is in the place of embalming, voice offering of bread and beer, provisions to Neferiu. So that's pretty much the information, the same as up there, but a different god with different titles. So now we'll go down over here and read the hieroglyphs over there. All right, welcome back, everybody. So now we're going to do the translation on the very top here of the door. So we're starting over here on the left side and then we'll go over to the right side after. So the left side says, saying, now this is you, it's not pronounced, it's just introduced a sentence. I gave bread to the hungry. And here it continues. Clothing, which is over here, 
clothing to the naked. This is you again, it's not pronounced. I ferried the boatless, so people who didn't have a boat, in my boat, myself. So he basically ferried the people himself. This is you again, it's not pronounced. It says, I gave property to the ones I knew of and to as well the ones I did not know. And now comes this title, the seal bearer of Lower Egypt. So this is seal, a seal, and that's a symbol for Lower Egypt. And this is the soul companion, the revered one again, Neferiu. And below here is Neferiu with his wife holding his hand. And this is her name right over there, so you can see it. It says over here, his beloved wife, so his beloved wife, Wedgebet. So this is Wedgebet. All right, now we'll go over here to the next one. It says, O oh, living ones upon the earth. So this is to gather the earth, the people upon the earth. And here it says, those who love life. It's referring to the people who are alive. This is you again, it's not pronounced for a new sentence, for a new sentence. And here it says, I took care of those great ones in the year of sealing the sack. So sealing the sack means that when time of famine had happened, they sealed the sacks to make sure they don't run out of food. So probably people starved to maintain at least the majority of the population. So this is a time of period where there was some famine. So sealing of the sack. This is you again, it's not pronounced. It just introduces the sentence. It says, I acted greatly with my strong arm in order to endure among my children. Continues here. It is Iker, who is the local god of this particular, uh, particular owner, who did it that I might become greater than the great ones and the noblemen, or all the noblemen, which is missing over here, the word all, all the noblemen, and my entire town. Finally, it says, which bore witness to me, which is missing over here. And then once again, you have the wife over here, which it says right there. You have his beloved wife, or his wife, his beloved, Wedgbet. So there it is. So that's pretty much the translation. I'll just zoom this out for you guys so you can see. So that's the translation of the entire offering here. Again, beautiful decoration. This came from the Metropolitan Museum of Arts. You can check out the link uh, to go to the Metropolitan and type the name of Neferiu, and you'll see the uh, beautiful uh, details of this with the image. I'll just zoom in a little more here so you can see the beautiful little carving of a bolt that locks the door on one side and locks the door on the other side, and the two eyes for the owner to be able to see through it. And this is a seal, almost like a seal symbol, which they would put normally on a door so it wouldn't be opened. So very interesting, very beautiful little piece of um, art here. And... Uh, this is the false door, never real. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed, and uh, until next time.